Hello dear friends, after a long time finally the follow-up review of my hexacopter build from Tanks Buyer uh, is finished. So maybe some of you know uh, during the programming of the speed controllers I reversed polarity of one of them and one of them uh, was busted. So until I got it again I tried to fly it as a quadcopter which I personally didn't like so much. So finally now I have the uh, replacement speed controller and finally the hexacopter is here as you can see it's quite big it's a 650 sized hexacopter uh, just for a comparison nearby I put my flip FPV which is like 360 sized or something like this or 400 sized as you can see it's it's quite smaller and for uh, additional comparison, this is my smallest multi-rotor, which is the Valkyra Ladybird. In comparison, the 650, it's, it's quite huge. You can put it here on top and you can almost <laughs> not notice it here. So it's quite big. It is the biggest multi-rotor I ever built and uh, as complexity, it's also the most complicated one. Okay, I just wanted to have an image compared to the Flip FPV regarding size and weight. This one it's about one kilo. Uh, the hexacopter I just put it on the scale yesterday with the brushless gimbal on, which you can see here. Uh, but without battery, it's around 1.8 kilograms, so it's quite heavy. But I'm considering I could uh, remove this landing gear and put uh, a different type of landing gear, which would cut some weight down. So again, uh, going through the, the build, uh, the flight controller I chose was the Creos All-in-One Pro version 2, which is here. It's connected with the Bluetooth uh, module, underneath is the distribution board. Uh, here on each arm I have the RC Timer 30 Amp uh, speed controller without uh, Simon K code in it, so it's just plain and simple one. Again, for, for motors, I have again RC Timer 850kV motors and these props are just 1045 uh, spec because I have it already from my Flip FPV. Uh, soon, I hope 11 uh, inch props will be available, so I will have to try. The frame, as you can see, can allow even bigger, I think 12 inch props without any problem and the risk of touching. As you can see underneath, I put some lights. It, uh, it's good for orientation. I will power on also the gimbal so you have an idea how, how it works. Okay, and in the, for the lights, just uh, allowing you to, to have a better orientation uh, during uh, morning or dusk. So this is how, how it is so far. As you can see, the gimbal is uh, already stabilizing. I don't have a GoPro, I only have a Mobius cam, so this will do. Uh, compared to the Flip, which had lights only in the front and in the back. Uh, for this one, considering I will fly it higher and do mostly video, hopefully, I put lights also below, as you can see. So it has lights in the front and below the hexacopter. So you can see Mobius, it's working. Uh, Turning it around, Ooh, quite heavy. Uh, yeah, I, I choose not to use bullet connector, I just solder everything. Because uh, sometime maybe the bullet connector will not work perfectly. Okay, anyway, the opinions are split between people loving bullet connector and people not liking them at all. So I have the, the flip with bullet connector but this one I choose not to take any risk because it's quite heavy and I don't need uh, any intermittent contact. Okay, in the back you can see the Valkyra RX 1002. So this is the receiver I chose for my, my build. Uh, the two long leads, one I put here in the back. So when I fly in this direction, this orientation, I will have more signal on this one. When I turn it facing me, I choose to put the other lid of the antenna facing forward to, to catch, let's say, the signal better from, from this side. As a new back, I have a regular uh, U-back, 
which is I think like 3 amps nothing nothing special here uh, what can I say I flew it yesterday uh, just a lesson learned for everybody in case it will happen things similar that happened to me uh, usually one of the motors cut off in flight uh, why because the mean minimum throttle value was not high enough so some of the motors actually cut off in flight uh, at lower uh, rpm let's say so be careful when you set up for this multi way 2.3 that i have when you set up the mean throttle value just choose a value that when you turn the throttle up on the radio it will start spinning all the motors at the same time so otherwise it will crash for me it cost me uh, one broken propeller and uh, luckily this frame hold up pretty well because uh, it fell two times for like two meter high on one side and it has no issue the arms are made of aluminium so like I said uh, this design is uh, from thanksbuyer.com uh, it's folding basically, I will not fold it now, but uh, you can see here uh, this arm and this arm will fold like this towards the middle arm like that but uh, I think I will not do that very often because it's it takes quite some time, it's not like under other uh, frames like Tarot that have some clips or like DJI uh, that has some clips for easy mounting and dismounting, this one you need to unscrew one, two three four and on this other side again one two three four uh, screws so basically as you can see here uh, this is how it looks I, I still need to mount the TVL 600 cam and the 5.8 gigabyte VTX which I will do probably tonight and then I will be able to, to have a full working platform so, as maybe you have seen, I use my Devo 10 to, to play with this uh, hexa and something really useful, it's uh, the MultiWi app that is really, really useful for debugging everything. So, for example, now just by arming it, uh, you will hear a notification. I'm just arming the hexa, you can see here. now. Yeah, so it basically gives you a, a signal uh, telling you to be careful because it's armed and when you throttle up the props will spin, that's clear. Okay, quickly, dashboard one. This is the information we have here, flying mode, uh, orientation and, and other things. Okay, going back, dashboard two. This is showing you orientation not really useful from my point of view dashboard 3 dashboard three. it shows you all the things you've seen before and uh, the the map location which because i'm indoor it doesn't show anything okay for radio it's really nice and useful uh, i hope you can see my my radio no maybe now uh, when you move the sticks it really let me disarm it first it has a pretty good resolution so this is my left stick if i move it you can see it moving really nice and it shows again okay left right throttle aileron elevator whatever you need it has a pretty good refresh rate and it shows really nice as you can see here it shows also the pwm values for throttle, pitch, roll, yaw and all the auxiliary channels, sorry for that now you can see it it shows also the for example the uh, F mod in my case it changed the flight mod you can see here okay going back the map just shows the map nothing useful I don't have any GPS on yet motors. for the motors you can see the values but uh, this is uh, only if I arm it and you can see actually the values I'm not throttling up more but you you get the, the idea 
okay and uh, for information it shows you what multi version you have and model configuration maybe you see it better now available sensors and so on and for graphs you just you just see the graphs from the graphical interface that you 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 have normally when you connect with the computer or laptop so okay there are more settings here like pid values this is more or less default plus I increase the p rate you can change anything just save to a prom read to a prom from a prom you can see the auxiliary channel configuration where you can define all the flight modes it's really nice and, and easy to use calibration logging various sound on off and here in the config you have more data but I, I didn't use this part of it yet so I think it's really useful if you have any Android phone I think it's working also for the Apple on their market uh, I really recommend using this tool uh, this is one of the reason I switched from the Mega Pirate NG and the fact that that Mega Pirate couldn't actually fly anyway I tried it on my, my quadcopters and I had really bad results with the PID tuning. So this is the, let me disarm it. So this is the, finally the, the, the hexa build I made. It's really much more stable than the quad also because of the added weight, but also because of the six props doing the job instead of four props. If you guys have a quadcopter, okay, it's a lot of fun, but this one it's, it's, it's like a bigger, like driving a bigger car compared to a go-kart for example is not so much fun but it's much more stable and much more uh, reliable in the air so I hope you like my review uh, it took some time because the parts uh, were, were busted one of the ESC but now finally it's done it flies well I'm happy about it so until next time thanks for watching and take care bye bye